What's going on everybody? Today I'm just out here getting some stuff ready to hang some stands on some public land. That's what we're going to be doing tomorrow. And we're also going to talk a little bit about our early season setups and why we're hanging these stands where we are. four stands to hang that's two sets since we're having a cameraman in there too so that makes four stands that we gotta hang today so I got two stands here I got two stands in the back of the truck and there's steps right there so we try to get all that stuff thrown in the back of the truck kind of get it organized and ready to go we're gonna take the kayaks with us we're gonna paddle down the river hang a set on the river makes it a little bit easier you know than carrying all this stuff all the way back in there then we're also gonna hang a set in the spot that we hunted during the late season where Chance and I saw a bunch of bucks we haven't hunted that during the early season, but we think it could be a good spot just based off what happened last year during the late season. So that's the two sets we're going to hang. I'm going to get, like I said, all this stuff thrown in the back of the truck, organized, and ready to go for tomorrow. These stands that we're going to put up now are going to be kind of our permanent stands. So they're not going to be spots that we're going to hunt 10 or 15 times a year. Most of the time we're going to be doing hanging hunts, packing in our stands, moving around the property. But we're going to use these as our permanent stands. They'll stay up all year long and be in areas that we feel like there's going to be good deer movement throughout the year. Chance sat in the river stand last year, was able to see that big buck and had a bunch of good deer movement. And then like I was saying earlier, we sat back on this other spot where we're going to hang the other stand during the late season and saw a bunch of good deer movement. So both places that we feel like you can see good deer movement throughout the year and just permanent stands we can have up to have a place to go. So our plan for these stands as far as security goes and keeping people from sitting in them or stealing them is to take only one set of sticks with us and put that in the tree that's going to stay there with it and we'll carry the bottom two sticks in. That'll keep people from climbing up into our stands when we're not there or from climbing up in there and stealing them. So that's our plan, just taking one stick, putting that in the tree, leaving it up there permanently, and then hauling in our other two sticks. Well, we should have everything packed up and ready to go. Got our kayaks here, got the stands back there. Like I said, we're hanging four stands, so two sets for a hunter and a cameraman. Got the sticks inside, so should be good to go. We're gonna go out early tomorrow. It's not supposed to be too hot, but we're gonna get out before it really gets too warm. This is what we're gonna do tonight. We got it all ready to go for tomorrow morning. So next time we'll see ya, it'll be tomorrow morning. We'll be heading down the road to hang these stands. All right, kayaks are loaded down. Life jackets are on because we got quite a bit of weight in these kayaks. So we're gonna paddle on down the river now and uh, get some stands set up. 15 days or so until they open the season, so about here, so get these kayaks in, get these stands up. So our first setup that we're going into here is going to be along the river, and we're setting up in this spot just because it has good deer movement throughout the year. And specifically for the stand, the reason we're putting it here is one, we've had good history seeing deer in these spots. So the main, I guess, strategy or thinking behind this first stand that we're putting up is that it's in an area with good deer movement throughout the year and it's kind of in between bedding and food. The food's gonna be to the north of us and the bedding's to the south. They come down to the river in the morning, getting a drink, crossing the river, and then heading back to bed. You get a lot coming back from that food source in the morning and they're doing it, surprisingly, in daylight a lot of the times. So again, just a stand that we're going to hang, leave all year long because it has good deer movement throughout the year. The spot we can go if we're in a hurry or don't feel like doing a hanging hunt. It always has good deer movement. And Chance last year would have been able to kill a buck from this stand, but the buck didn't walk into the opening and then he was kind of just slightly off the trail. So we put this in a good spot adjust it a little bit and put it on the trail you might be able to kill them during the early season so it's a good spot it's got a lot of good deer movement through it it's in between bedding and a food source which is important here for early season one other reason that we're hanging a stand here for the early season it's kind of an area we can do 
maybe kind of a gigantic observation set. We know there's bedding in there and there's a field back there, there's bedding behind us and bedding down the river so we can kind of get just an overall view of the deer movement for the year and like where they're bedding and where they're kind of moving to. So that's why it's a good early season spot for us right back in here. And that's why it's part of our kind of our early season strategy to hang right back up in here. All right, let's get these dang stands over there and get them hung. So, as you can see behind me, up there, we got our stands up. They're not up as high as we'd want them to, but we ran into somebody's old wooden stand, so like we either would have had to have two extra steps to get above it, or really stretch out the steps we had, so we just threw them up there. But we think it's gonna be a good spot. Chances the deer like to come out from right over there, and either come straight out across, right out there into that opening, or they come from right back through here. We had a doe bed right back here when we got here, so like to come out there or right there, we should be able to get a good shot on them. We can see the river down there too if anything's crossing so it should be a good spot for us a good early season spot we're gonna get back there get in the kayaks and paddle down river and get back over there and try to walk all the way down and uh, hang another set well we're heading back in now to the stand that we're calling the high wall set and this is a spot that we actually overlooked last year because we put a trail cam out during the early season and got just like five or six does was all so pulled the camera and didn't hunt there and we had another set that's pretty close to this spot and then one day me and Brody decided to get down and just see what was just over this little hill and that was the day when we got back in there and we had bucks at 10 yards from us and bucks running everywhere it's just an area that you have to cross a lot of stuff to get to that a lot of other hunters don't go. And then I went back there during really in the late season, middle part of December, I believe, and there was bucks everywhere. I saw three or four shooter bucks, good shooter bucks back there, and they were all going up at one spot to get up. There's kind of some ag fields there to the south and to the west. They bed back there and just get up, go right up that little hill, but we're not sure if they're using it during the early season. So that's what that trail cam's up there for again now. So we don't know. We might end up not getting anything on the trail camera like last year. And then they might get pushed back there with more pressure. And there's going to be deer there in the late season we know for sure from last year. So that's why we're hanging these sets here and just making them permanent. We know we're going to want to come back here um, multiple times. We have to have the right wind because of all the bucks that are in the area. But we're going to hang the permanent sets. That way when we go in, we're really close to the bedding area. We don't have to hang stands every time, but they're gonna be a good permanent sets for us with the right wind. So we've been walking down this dry river here and there's multiple trails. It's a good trail, just parallel on the edge, which you would expect bucks to probably do too. Like during the rut, they might parallel this edge here and cut those doe trails that are coming across, but there's some good trails coming across. But we got up here and if you look underneath the cedar tree, there's a gigantic bed in there. So if you're wondering what a buck bed looks like, that's a buck bed. And we're kind of in some marshy stuff. You can see all this uh, horsetail grass here that they like to eat on. This is just a through and through. Everything about this bed is a buck bed. So Brody's going to crawl back in there and you'll see why. You can see just how matted down it is. If you look, I mean, there's, there's hair right there. There's hair in it. Like, this is a buck bed. 
there's a little bit of a rise back there. So if I had to guess, he's probably getting the wind coming out from the woods behind him. And then he's kind of looking out here. So that's something we might uh, take notice of because there's plenty of trees we can plop in right there or right down there or right back there. There's hair all over in it and it's fresh. So, and it's huge. So buck bed, if you're wondering what a buck bed looks like, it looks like this. All right, so we had to stop and take a look at that giant buck bed there. But like I was talking about earlier, we're really coming back to this spot because of all the information we gained from hunting there last year. It's just a spot that's hard for other hunters to get to. But we're gonna hang these these uh, tree stands, leave the permanent set there. So, gonna head back there now. Still got a little bit of a walk, but we'll see what happens, what it looks like when we get back there. All right, we made it back into our spot. Uh, a few more mosquitoes back here. Trail camera is still there. Had a bunch of ants in it, so I'm letting the ants clear out. Um, but just real quick, we're gonna come in from back behind me and we've done it before, we did it last season. If we go slow and quiet, the deer and the bucks that are bedded just that way can't see us if we come in quiet. That's why we're hanging the stand now, so that it's already up as close as we are to bedding. And then the main routes that the deer took last year are right behind me here, right back that way. That's where the main routes the deer were using, and some of them come up and come this way. But what we need is a wind blowing from behind the camera here back over my shoulder or from my left going directly to my right. That way it takes everything up and over away from where the deer are bedded. If we have any other wind, we can't be here. So we have to be smart about how we're hunting here. Brody's putting the tree stand up now. I'm gonna go check on the trail camera, but should have this tree stand up relatively quickly. Well, that'll do it for all of our hanging up a stands today. We got one set up over there on the river. Just got this one set up. But we are doing something a little bit different on our website. We have a little bit more information that goes along with the blog. Chance goes into depth, writes a little bit more about, you know, why we're setting up where we are and some of the little things that we don't talk about in the blog. So make sure you visit our website at whitetailinstinct.com. That'll do it for today. Like I said, stands are hung. We got one more trail camera to grab and we're going to get out of here. So if you haven't already, remember to subscribe and like the video. Thanks for watching.